What's going on guys? I am back with another video. Today I took out my uh, my first pair of ear mastics, my oscillator ear mastics. Um, took them out to give them a once over. I seen a male had a bunch of stuck shit on his tail. So I'm soaking them right now. I do this every now and then just to give them a health check. Um, especially around this time when the babies hatch. Because a female, she'd be picking on the male. Um, they're very defensive with their nest site. Um, that's why I put a nest box inside of the um, enclosure to try to reduce some of the aggressiveness from her. But it's kind of just in her. But um, move, removing the um, the nest box definitely helps a little bit. So I put the nest box in there when I see that she's filling up with eggs. Um, so she can start, go in there and start digging. And she usually lays inside the lay box. So um, once I know that she's laid, I can tell by her body her body uh, structure right now she's still putting weight back on she's usually bigger than him um but but yeah once her body is deflated i know she laid the eggs and i pull a whole lay box out like you guys if, you, if you've been subscribed for a while you see me collect the eggs and stuff like that so for a couple of years now um uh, well she she gave me eggs four years in a row um my, my very first year I got her, she laid eggs for me, I think it was about four months later, um, from this male. So, this, these, they live together year-round, but she does get rough with him um, when it's time for her to lay eggs. Or after she lays the eggs, she chases him around. So, um, I try to, uh, if it get too bad, I take him off for a little while until she know that the nest box is no longer in there. And then I reintroduce them. Um, but she does get them uh, sometimes, so I'm um, just checking over them right now. Uh, and she also get more aggressive after the eggs hatch, even though the eggs are not with her, like she has some type of internal clock or something. So uh, the babies have been, I think they're about a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. Not, not two weeks yet, about a week and a half. So she's been chasing a little bit, so I'm just taking them out, getting this stuck shed off. Um, same, similar to with the bearded dragons, I just, um, um, make sure that nothing's stuck on the tip of the tail. Um, these, these ones have rough, rough tails. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to be peeling this, peeling this patch off right here. Um, she's, she bites them on the tail. She has a bite mark right there. Um, but it's already healed. That's an old, old, uh, wound. But, yeah, just give them once over. Take off, um, stuck shed and stuff like that. And make sure that their body weight is good. And I'm soaking them in water. These guys can go their whole life without water. But they will drink it occasionally. So anytime I take them out. Because they're wild caught. Anytime I take them out I soak them. To give them the opportunity to drink the water if they want to. Um, but I don't keep it in the cage. Because they don't like humidity. Um, <clears throat> so they get most of their moisture from their vegetables they eat. And they get fresh vegetables uh, at least three times a week. So. They get plenty of fresh vegetables and they also eat pellets and different type of flowers and stuff like that. But um, for right now, I'm going to show you guys how I peel this, uh, this shed off and some of the some of the stuff that I do when I'm doing a, doing a check of them. Also, these guys are, like I said, wild caught. Uh, both of my breeding pairs are wild caught, so I don't handle them often. Um, they're very reluctant to bite. Uh, they try to whack their tail, if anything. I've never been even um, attempted to be bitten by either of these. Um, but they do show their discomfort of being picked up by wagging their tail. But over after that, after a little while, they just calm down in your hand. And um, I don't, I think the reason that I've been successful breeding every year is because I don't bother them. I just make sure that they have food and make sure that they're okay. I don't go pick them up and play with them unless I'm doing a check on them like this. Um, and I think that's part of the success of me being able to breed them every year. You know, just let them be in their own. Is she actually drinking right now? See, like I said, uh, they don't they don't have to drink, but they will drink when it's uh when it's necessary, especially if she's still recovering from those eggs, even though it's two months later. Uh, she's put on a lot of weight since uh, she laid the eggs, but she's still not back to her full glory. She's, she's a big girl. 
Uh, she bought the max size of the Oscillator Gymnastics, which is about 12 inches. He's a little bit more robust right now. He has his head under the water, but I haven't seen him drinking any. But she's definitely taking a drink. But I'm going to um, let them sit a little bit longer. I'm going to cut the camera off for a second. When I come back, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, me uh, removing that stuck shed from the tail and checking their fingers and stuff and giving their body a little physical. All right. All right, so we're going to start with the male since I see the most stuck shed on him. Like I said, they uh, when you first take them out of the cage, they're pretty wild. But once you get them out and let them settle down, uh, they're pretty calm. So this is a very good pet, in my opinion. Like if I would have got your mastics and four bitter dragons, I probably would have never had bitter dragons at all. Uh, these guys don't need um, to eat meat or protein as far as insects. So, they're very, very easy. They're a lot more easy to keep. Um, the lighting is a little bit more expensive because they need uh, a little bit more heat. Um, and the better lighting you give them, the better they, they do. Uh, because these guys are from a very, very hot place. Uh, but, like I said, uh, I take them out. You can see little bite marks. She, she bites them sometimes, like right here. Um, but this all healed up. This is from about two years ago. Mm, but it still got the marks and still got stuck shed on it. So I'm gonna peel whatever is hanging off off, just to give her give him a good look over. You see, he has a blue blue undertone with orange highlights. These guys like to eat uh, vegetables, flowers, um, seeds. Um, they love um, they love uh, bee pollen. Look at that bird. Yeah, they like bee pollen. Um, some of them like millet. They like lentils. But all this is just old skin sticking onto him. That he can't break free, so I'm gonna get it off to give him some relief. It's not hurting him at all. Probably more like a relief. So I, I use a little um, tweezers, and I just go in where I see the skin sticking up, and use that as a starting point to pull up whatever else when it comes up. This right here probably not ready yet. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Let's see. And they call oscillator or massive because of these white spots. A lot of times they'll be on um, female. You'll see it better. It looks like little eyes on them, like right there. The female has more of those spots like that. And also check the toes, make sure there's no stuck shit on them. This guy, his name is Whip. The female name is Miracle. We named the female first, and uh, well, we actually named him first. Because he whipped his tail, he usually whip his tail, and my daughter named him Whip. And then I thought it'd be funny to name the, the um, female Miracle, because it's a girl name, and also together is Miracle Whip. So, yeah, like I said, I just go into here and see what's what's loose, and make sure I can remove it for him. So his tail isn't restricted. We got some underneath here as well. 
And you can, uh, most lizards have what they call femoral pores. On males, they're going to be very, this line right here, is considered femoral pores. Um, the more you see, the more stand out it is, uh, stand out, the more they stand out, is more likely it's a uh, male. But this is a species that's very hard to tell, uh, male and female, especially at younger ages. Once they get a certain age, you can tell. Um, the male has a more bulky head. I'll show you that as well after I'm finished getting some of this stuck shed off of him. So look at that nice blue chin, blue and orange. Most of the stuck shed is on the tip of his tail, like right there. I'm gonna get it off. So I'm going in with the tweezers and just find a part to come up. There we go. And then let it break loose. And I know it has to be relief once it comes off because it's like a rubber band. And it's heavy skin, so it's not it's not light. You can hear it dropping on the countertop. But he's overall good. He's robust. Um, he has a great appetite. Um, he's head bobbing and stuff. No open wounds. So she's not doing a number on him like she normally do. But he got he got some battle wounds for sure. Like right there, she was getting them. Came in. He came in with a couple of dings as well but overall he was a good animal he put on a lot of weight since i had him nice thick legs you can see that beautiful color and when i get new lights i'm gonna show you as well um once you, when you put new brand new lights in and they feel that fresh uvb or you take them outside um you can definitely see the difference they brighten up very very much but yeah that's that's the male he's all good he's not missing any digits or anything no stuck shed on the tip of the toes he is missing a little bit of fingernail but he came in like that And I had these guys for four years now, five years, and they, four years. You got green on his neck right here. I'm gonna put him back in the water. I'm gonna take the female and give her a look over. Just using a paper towel to make sure they're not too damp. Her tail does. She don't have any stuck shit on hers. She's usually more of a green, a green phase or orange bands. They go across as you see his his full back was pretty much orange she's more of like a green base with like orange bands going across and like i said you can see her uh, oscillated spots a little bit more better and there's also going the line as well See, females have the femoral pores as well, but they're not as bold as the male. Let me take him back out and show you. Like, if you didn't have a male right next to him to prepare, 
he would he would probably think she's a male because of the femoral pores. But if you have an actual male next to her and you compare the femoral pore size, you can definitely tell. And also you can tell by the hair shape. See the male is much wider by the cheek area. It look, makes the, the snout look shorter. But you can see these loose flaps right here. She's still recovering from the eggs. And that's why why she took that that long drink. We'll put him back in. Continue to look her over. I like to check the eyes, make sure they're clear. And if they have what is called snot, too much built over, I'll take that off, but they didn't have any, so I didn't have to take any off. But yeah, that's the mother to the 12 babies. Well, that's the mother and father to the uh, 12 babies that I hatched in here. And um, the five the five from the other clutch came from a different pair. I'll do an update video on that pair as well. Um, at a later date so right now I'm gonna take a couple pictures for Instagram um, of these guys since I have them out um, if you guys are not following me on Instagram I have a link in the description you guys can go follow me over there and also a link to my um, Facebook as well alright guys hope you guys enjoyed the video until the next one I'm out peace Alright guys, you know how I said that um, the female been chasing a male from that one area or chasing them around off recently. Like I, um, I put the lay box in there. She laid 12 eggs in the lay box. Looked like she laid some more outside the lay box. That's why she's been aggressive to him recently. Um, I've been going, uh, I've seen her going to a certain area and being more aggressive to, towards him in that area. And that's normally where the lay box is. So that's what I put it off as, but I had to, li I had to lift the rock up to take them out. So um, I just checked the sand um, out of curiosity and found five more eggs, which makes sense. Because last year she laid um, 20, I think it was 21 eggs. And it was a huge, huge litter. And this year she laid, um, she, that I thought she laid 12 and that's what hatched. And then I just found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. So that's 19. Or was it? Yeah, 19. So that's more closer to. It might be more in there as well. I just did a, a quick sweep. There might be a couple more. But um, yeah, that's why she's been chasing them out of that area. Because she, her eggs would have been hatching right now over there. But could have had, what, seven more babies? But I didn't, when I touched her, she was completely empty. So maybe she either filled up again and laid some more, or maybe she laid those first and then she, I put the lay box in there and then she laid them in the lay box because it was more moisture. Either way, uh, I got 12 good babies for the year, so I'm happy with that. Would have been better if I would have got these as well. But I just wanted to show you guys that, um, um, that she laid some eggs, and that's probably why she's been more aggressive towards him. Uh, that I and I was mentioning that early in the video, so thought I'd add that in. Um, I was getting ready to put them back in, and um, I, like I said, I moved the rock out the way, and I said, "Let me check right here," because it, it had sand piled up like higher in, in a certain area. So I moved that sand and found these and saw they're there. So a couple of them was busted anyway. You can tell by how much sand is stuck to them. but potentially could have had seven more babies, so it had 19. And like I said, she's a big female. She's probably like the max, the max on the size level for that species. And that's a very huge clutch for a year of mastics. So uh, nine, it would have been 19 babies. But all right, guys, I'm really out this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until the next video, peace.